Secretary Blinken was in Beijing earlier this week, uh, and he said it even when he was there. Uh, the, the Chinese were not open to the idea of reopening uh, the lines of communication between the Chinese and the U.S. military. Now, we've known for a couple months now that the Chinese uh, military leaders really have sort of given the silent treatment to their U.S. counterparts dating back to February with the Chinese spy balloon. Right. Uh, and so this has really uh, been a major concern for the Biden administration. Uh, and as a number of officials have said, this silence from the Chinese uh, makes the possibility of an incident uh, or the escalation of a miscommunication much more likely than if they were to have some means to communicate. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by defense reporter Mike Brest. Mike, there's been this controversy over where the Space Command headquarters is going to be located, and some Republicans in Congress want to make sure the Biden administration doesn't base that decision on one issue. What is that issue? So that issue is abortion access. But to take a step back, Right now, Space Command is located, their headquarters are located in Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, in the final days of the Trump administration, the Air Force came out with a plan uh, that would move the permanent headquarters to Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, and so while that hasn't happened and the Air Force and DOD are, and the Biden administration are still working through it, uh, we've heard reports here and there that uh, it might not be as simple as just moving it. Uh, in part because Colorado officials don't want to give it up. Right. Uh, they've seen uh, roughly 1,500 jobs created by Space Command. They've seen uh, influxes in their economy. Why would they want them to leave? Mm -hmm. uh, so we've seen Colorado lawmakers make a pretty concerted effort to try and get Space Command to stay there. It includes pitches to the president when he came to town a couple weeks ago. Uh, but we've also seen Alabama lawmakers go really hard at this as well and say, uh, the, Air, the Air Force picked Alabama. That process said this location is the top process, is the top place for it to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was a GAO investigation into that selection process. So Alabama officials really do uh, believe that space, co uh, spa space Command should be in Alabama. Uh, and then we heard reports about six weeks ago now uh, that the administration might not be uh, moving Space Command to Alabama due to Alabama's abortion laws. Now, to take a step back, obviously, uh, when the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, a bunch of states implemented uh, stricter abortion laws, mm -hmm. Alabama being one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the reports out there were that the administration wouldn't relocate Space Command there uh, because of abortion access. Now, we've heard, I've heard from White House officials that this isn't a part of the calculation, mm -hmm. uh, but we saw uh, members of the Senate earlier this week introduce a bill that would uh, formally prevent uh, the Biden administration from using this issue of abortion access into this decision. Uh, and we've heard, uh, or we've seen lawmakers put different, legis different language in different pieces of legislation, uh, all to move this process along and get a final decision. So talk a little bit about the Pentagon leaker. There's been some legal developments in his case. Where are we, are we at that currently? So Airman Teixeira uh, pleaded not guilty earlier this week to six counts of the willful retention of classified information. Mm -hmm. uh, as people remember, he was accused of leaking hundreds of classified documents over, the peri over a period of a couple months uh, before he was ultimately arrested this spring. Uh, since his arrest, some documents have continued to trickle out here and there that he had posted and then, uh, you know, were found and reshared on social media. But for the most part, the, the leaking stopped uh, and he has remained in pretrial uh, detention uh, where he is currently awaiting trial uh, and he's pled uh, not guilty to these crimes. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of tension with China and Secretary of State Antony Blinken has gone to China proving that not only Nixon can go to China, He's, he's had his meetings. They don't seem to have really resolved, though, any of the underlying issues. That's correct. So, as you mentioned, Secretary Blinken was in Beijing earlier this week, uh, and he said it even when he was there. Uh, the, the Chinese were not open to the idea of reopening uh, the lines of communication between the Chinese and the U.S. military. Now, we've known for a couple months now that the Chinese 
uh, military leaders really have sort of given the silent treatment to their U.S. counterparts dating back to February with the Chinese spy balloon. Right. Uh, and so this has really uh, been a major concern for the Biden administration. Uh, and as a number of officials have said, this silence from the Chinese uh, makes the possibility of an incident uh, or the escalation of a miscommunication much more likely than if they were to have some means to communicate uh, right, it's in, potentially dangerous. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we've seen Secretary Austin say over and over again uh, how, in, in, how significant it is. Uh, and we've also seen, uh, over the course of this silence, we've seen uh, a Chinese uh, fighter pilot intercept a U.S. aircraft. We've seen uh, aggression from China, the Chinese Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so well, in addition to just the silence from Chinese leaders, we've also seen a more aggressive Chinese military in the region for about 18 months now. So that would seem to be a, a difficult and potentially dangerous combination. Absolutely, and we also know that the uh, Biden DOD, you know, in their latest national security or national defense strategy referred to China as its pacing challenge, mm -hmm. uh, which is a term that DOD loves to use. Uh, and to, in DOD's calculation, China is the only country with the ability and the desire to reshape the international world order. Uh, but at the same time, the U.S. also says they're not looking for conflict, they just want competition. Uh, and so the biggest, the best way in the U.S. mind to get back uh, to a, a playing field of competition uh, is reopening these lines of communication. Thank you, Mike. You can read Mike and the rest of our national security team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.